Hi everyone, I'm Daniela Wolter-Surfer, I go by Danny, and today I'm going to talk about um, the curve. Uh, some of you know me, and I've presented on what the curve is, how you can map the curve before with uh, other fellow mappers like Chris Beto and Emily Arrows, but today I'm going to talk about how, well, you, you'll, you'll find out. So I am a transportation analyst at Cambridge Systematics, so I'm in the transportation industry. So perhaps the way I'm um, seeing this topic may be a bit different um, than the way you see it or other users see it. So, okay. Um, so, okay, it was an animated slide on PowerPoint, but now it's a PDF. Anyway, for the purposes of curve management, we, we're gonna treat the curve as an asset that houses many other assets. So not just the, the edge along the street and the sidewalk or the edge that separates them, but rather um, the other assets, including bus stops, bike lanes, waste management practices, trees, parking spots, uh, parking meters, parklets, which are like curb patios. We're seeing a lot of that during COVID. Bike sharing station, loading zones, very crucial, um, et cetera. So the good thing is that these are all assets that we can easily map within OSM, meaning that this data is available right now in a lot of cities. And for cities that don't have it mapped, it's quite easy to map it, especially if you're familiar with it. So it's a win-win for cities. They can benefit from the data. And if they're missing data, they can also map it themselves. And in that way, uh, would contribute to the project. Uh, okay, let me scroll down. I'm hoping as I'm scrolling down, you see it, right? You should be able to see a screen capture of Bellevue, Washington. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You're, you're good. Because I can't see anything. <laughs> uh, so here's a snippet of, for instance, the city of Bellevue in Washington. And I wanted to focus a little bit on Bellevue since it's a mid sized city that is growing quite fast, especially the, due to the tech companies that are moving there, like Amazon and Microsoft. And it's a well sized city right next to a big city, Seattle, for those who know. Um, I have not been to Bellevue myself, but it is a hot topic, a hot city amongst urban planners and transportation planners. So for this example, again, if it was, if the presentation itself had worked, it was animated, but as a PDF, we'll leave it at that. Let's focus on this corridor right here. I don't know if my, you can see my cursor, but there's a circle. So this corridor is the 110th Avenue Northeast, and it's, um, Again, I've never been for, if there's anyone familiar with the area, it looks like a very active corridor. And just from this small snippet, you can see that we already have very useful information uh, that the city could use for asset management practices, specifically for curb management. So you can see that we have trees, we have a lower curb map, unmarked crossing mark, bike parking, we have benches, and of course the sidewalk. And um, we, there, also, there are also some gardens, mini gardens along the, by the sidewalk. So um, essentially some cities label that as um, like city furniture because it's next to the benches and it's like an area where people can just sit and relax. So with this, um, to, so with this information, they, the city can not just manage, hey, oh, a tree, fell, okay, let's go fix it. But it's very useful for also identifying potential loading zones and TNC zones. TNCs are Uber and Lyft and other uh, ride sharing services that function like that, or identifying also, hey, maybe we can do a bike sharing station here. Um, there's a lower curve here. Maybe this is great for, um, and it's ADA compliant for a bus stop, or again, designating a TNC zone. Uh, it'll make it easier for passengers to get on and off. Okay, so now you should be seeing Glen Falls, New York. I asked some people on Slack for some cities and um, I received Bellevue and Glen Falls and then some other cities, so thank you for that. And then I really like Glen Falls. It's actually very thoroughly mapped. This is a, a great example. Um, this portion is of the Glen Street corridor. 
And honestly, it's quite impressive. You have street lamps, trees, um, mail drop boxes right here. Again, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but hopefully you can see the little point of interest map there. Um, you have benches, waste baskets, trash cans, fire hydrants, bicycle parking. Uh, so ideally, I would hope uh, it's been seen that cities would want to start curb practice, curb management practices with their main commercial corridors. That's where all the movement is. Uh, it's obviously commercial. You'll get a lot of loading. Uh, you'll get a lot of traffic, vehicular traffic and pedestrian traffic. So this is a great example. Um, Again, I, I haven't been here, but just seeing the data, I am assuming that it's a, one of the main commercial corridors. Uh, for locals, I would recommend, if you know the area, start mapping the signs, perhaps like parking signs, loading zone signs, handicap parking signs, or et cetera, other points of interest like that, because uh, those are essential for cities. And with all of these cities, with all of these assets maps, again, cities could then be better informed on how to incorporate bus lanes, bike parking, and protective bike infrastructure, um, making and overall making the pedestrian experience safer and manage better vehicular traffic. I know um, every city and residents of cities, we want more choices, not just being stuck to, you know, having to own a vehicle. That's not ideal. So, uh, I know I'm running out of time. This is a topic that we could discuss more. I am very passionate about it. I, I am always doing research on my own. So please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, if you want to discuss more. I can talk to you about some of the work, some of the work I've done with some cities, not all. Um, and in the future, when we meet in person at State of the Map, uh, we can meet in person. So for now, I'd be interested in learning about your thoughts on this, if you have any ideas, if you see cities actually benefiting from this concept. Um, I think it's better to push for, for this rather than having an expensive private mapping platform charging cities for their data. So that's it. Thank you.